this week, these last two weeks have been kind of, they've just been strange in the sense of, I feel like there have been a lot of funerals that have happened. Um, right here in this, our church family, loved ones that we know, um, it just seems to, it just seems to be all around us. And, and if you have your eyes open, you know that, yes, this is part of life. And at this point in my own journey too, my own family, my, my grandmother, she's kind of at that point where she's got to put both worlds right now. Um. You know, she's gone multiple days without food and water. And so we're, we're waiting. We're waiting. And it's not that we wait for the finality of death. We wait for the transition to the life that is to come. And my grandma, uh, if you have the opportunity to know my grandma, uh, you know that she is a servant of Jesus Christ. And, and, and I hear the stories, too, the loved ones have passed on even this past year in this church. Beautiful stories, beautiful testimonies of the saints who have lived this life before us as examples. And it is, it's a, it's a strange time. And I went to a funeral this past week, and it, it had me thinking about this. It had me thinking about heaven. <laughs> had me thinking about what in the world is heaven all about? I mean, what is it really? You know, we've got some pictures and images and scripture, and we... We sometimes we long for that day. We, we can't wait for the, the mansion and the streets of gold. You know, because finally, I don't have to live in a small house anymore. I get, a, I get to live in a mansion. You know, or the streets of gold and this, you know, this, a crystal sea. And, and the images of heaven sometimes for us, sometimes some of it is informed by scripture. Other, other times it's informed by some of the literature of history, too, that sometimes we work with ideas of the life that has become. That it looks like that. It's, it's that out there. And yet... It's made me think about this, that, that in Scripture, too, that there's, there's a little bit of a different picture, and we just, we just prayed it in the Lord's Prayer. That we think sometimes a whole lot about this. We want to get to heaven so we can get off this planet. We want to get to heaven because that is where we want to be rather than here on earth. And, and this idea is that the Lord's Prayer brings these two things together. And so when we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That this is what happens, I think, for us. It happens for me, too, that we, we sometimes get in our minds the idea of this. Heaven is over here, and I want to get there. And I think that that's what my life is all about. And sometimes I think, we think as a church that, this is what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get as many people to heaven as possible. When I believe that scripture says this, scripture has a little bit of a different picture. It's not so much about our mission is to get as many people to heaven as this. It's to bring heaven to earth. It is, it is to usher in the kingdom of God that Jesus Christ started to preach and proclaim 2,000 years ago. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of heaven is here. It is among you. It's in you. I brought it. It's here. And now what he calls the church to do now is to continue his mission of bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. And so if I, if I live my life with thinking, I want to escape from here, well, then I, I totally miss the mission of the church. And understanding this, we are trying to, by the grace of God and by the Spirit that has been poured out upon us and upon all flesh, upon all those who believe Jesus Christ is Lord, we forget that that's the mission. He has filled us with the Spirit, not just so that we can get to heaven. He's filled us with the Spirit so that we can bring heaven to earth. And what happens at Pentecost that we celebrated last week? Yes, the Spirit came, poured out upon these 120 believers. And so here these 120 believers are sitting in this room. They're filled by the Spirit. They start proclaiming the good news. They're eyewitnesses. They're martyrs. And their eyewitness account is this. They are proclaiming what Jesus Christ has done, who he is, what he has done. And now what they are as witnesses is this. They're not just spectators who report on, here's what Jesus did. Now what the church is this. The church, because of the Spirit, we're active participants in what Christ is still doing in the world. And what Christ is doing in the world through his church is bringing about the kingdom of heaven here. And so if we live our lives so preoccupied about getting there, we forget it. We forget what our mission is about here and now. My grandma, I've shared with you, my grandma is, she's, a, she's an amazing woman. 
I mean, when I think of self-sacrifice, when I think of love, when I think of service and body, when I, when I think of someone who I've never heard a bad word whatsoever, yeah, not only a cuss word, yeah, yeah I'd faint if I heard her, no. Not, not just that, no, she, she doesn't speak badly about anyone. I've never heard her, like, she doesn't even really critique people. You're like, come on, Grandma, tell me what you're really thinking. What are you, what are you really thinking? And my grandma has lived such a life of service, self-sacrifice, of love. I have memories of my grandma, too. I, I, she played freeze tag with us, you know, when she's like 78 years old out in the front yard, you know, like Chinese freeze tag, we're going through her legs, you know, my grandma was awesome. They can, she, she was like, she couldn't move, she literally was frozen because of her back, you know. And my, but my grandma, she did, she, she gave. She's the kind of woman that she served in the nursery at church because no one else wanted to miss certain things and certain celebrations. And my grandma would be the first one that said, hey, I don't want anyone else to have to miss. I'll go down and watch the baby. That, that's, just the way, that's just the way she lived. She took care of my grandma. <clears throat> you know, but I look at her, she, she longs for heaven. But, but let me tell you this. I don't know that my grandma realizes she's brought heaven to earth in the way that she has lived her life. She's brought it to earth. And when anyone encounters I'm a Jean column, <laughs> or Jean, or grandma, what they encounter is the very love of God that is in Christ Jesus. The kingdom of heaven has come. And it's right here in flesh and blood as this person who is filled by the Spirit is living this out. And so anybody who bumps up to my grandma bumps up to the reality that heaven has come. We sing it. There's an old song that we, uh, an old hymn that probably most of our songs about heaven are about then and there. But you know, there's a song that was written in 1961, I think. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Which is probably the most accurate from a biblical standpoint of the image and the picture in scripture is Heaven came down. And heaven, well, the glory of God, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, it filled my soul. When at the cross, my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away. It is, the, the picture is beautiful. And so here's this idea is what Scripture tells us is this. Yes, the mission of the church is to continue to live out the kingdom of God, to usher in the very kingdom. We pray it in the Lord's Prayer. We embody it. We live it out. But most of us, I think, we get caught up. I still get caught up. I think I want to escape this place because there's so much suffering. There's so much evil. Is it really getting better? Because the news really only reports on the bad stuff. So we automatically think the church really is rendered ineffective. But the church is doing a lot of amazing, good things by the very spirit and grace of God that is in Christ Jesus. The church is making a difference in the world. And sometimes we ask, Lord, why isn't Jesus coming back yet? Why hasn't he returned? And I really believe this. I've heard several preachers say this too. And I think in scripture you might see a little bit of this. But I really think Jesus sometimes is saying, it's because I'm waiting on you, church, to be the church. Be who I've called you to be. Usher in my kingdom. Bring heaven to earth. Live that way. And so if that is truly what Christ is calling us to, to do, is to say, well, how in the world is this going to happen? And I think Paul, he's absolutely convinced that this is what Scripture's pointing us to. And there's a prayer that I want, I want you to uh, read with me. And we'll read it uh, out loud here from Ephesians chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. Let's just read this prayer together from, from Paul for the church in Ephesus. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, and he strengthen you with power the spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts with your faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all 
about this. I'm thinking, the Lord kind of had me all over the place, or I had me all over the place this week, thinking, Lord, what in the world am I preaching this week? And I had a certain idea, but then I felt, no, that's not what I need to talk about. And I think it's th this idea of because of death that was all around me, I just sensed the Lord saying, Tony, talk to the church about what, what this, what's, this, what's this all for? What are we doing? Why do we carve out this time every week to show up to church on Sunday morning? Why do we call ourselves Christians and followers of Christ? What are we doing as the church? What's, the, what's this all for? So that people can just believe and get to heaven? Or does God have something more in store than just for getting us to heaven? We've been made more for more than that. We've been, we've been made to, yes, embody it, to bring it, to, to enflesh it, to, to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world so that the world comes and touches the church. That, that the church is this idea, the church is the, the sacrament to the world. Now, now hear what I'm saying on this. We celebrate when we celebrate communion. We say it's a sacrament. It's a means of grace. God's grace comes to us in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The church is the sacrament to the world. We are the lived out body and blood of Jesus Christ. That heaven came down. That the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven came down on earth. And we are the people that proclaim this good news. We live it out. And we do so because the Spirit has empowered us. The Spirit has filled us up. We get to a point, and here's the prayer that, that Paul prays. I love it. The prayer is this, that we may have power to grasp one thing. How deep and how great and how high and how wide is the love of Christ Jesus for this world. Because when you and I grasp that, we see things completely different. We begin to see every other human being as someone that Jesus Christ died for. And our rants on Facebook, really, really, Jesus Christ loves everyone. If anything we're going to post, let's post with the love of God, how deep it is, how wide it is, how expansive it is. Let us post about, yes, that Christ has been faithful to us even when we've been unfaithful. That even when we step off and we struggle to be who he's called us to be, he doesn't condemn us and reject us. He reaches his hand out and says, oh, my precious child, let me teach you how to walk. Let me teach you how to walk. And if the church, if we could just, if we could just grasp the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, the church would change the world. And I'm seeing glimpses of it. And let me tell you, I see glimpses of it here at Old Hickory Church in Nazarene. Because some of you, I see it in you. And my prayer is that God does this in all of us, that he fills us with the fullness of God. This is Paul's prayer. He, I want you to know, I want you to grasp this love so that you will be filled up to the fullness of the measure of God. And who is God? God is love. And so if you and I are going to be people who are filled to the full measure of love, that, that tells me a few things. That means we need to be empty first. If we're going to be filled to the full measure of God, if we're going to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ, if we're going to accomplish our mission, if we are going to be the church that Jesus Christ has called us to be, We've got to empty ourselves so that he can fill us up with himself. Because if I'm honest with you too, let me just tell you sometimes, even your pastor sometimes, I don't know that I've grasped his love completely. But I can say this, I know I've been grasped by his love. Amen. Amen. Because if I'm honest with you, I can tell you, I know in my heart sometimes there are some things that happen. There is laziness that happens sometimes. There is apathy and there is indifference towards some people who are in need. And sometimes when I see signs and I see people begging for help, I don't even want to make eye contact with them. Lord, fill me with the full measure of your love. I'm not saying these able people, I'm just saying our, our attitude and our heart and our mindset should be the very love of God. And this is what's beautiful. God's promise to us is this. I will do that for you. I will work 
pray his Paul's prayer for the church for us. Hope you feel, grasp it, grasp it, because it's already grasped you. Take a hold of that love. And let this love that surpasses knowledge, the love that says this, even when people know you, and they still love you. That's amazing. Just think about that for a minute. The love of Christ is that kind of love that surpasses knowledge that says, I know you in all your flaws, and all your brokenness, and all your weakness, and all your past, and all your struggles, and all your addictions, and all of your hard-heartedness, and all of your bitterness, and all of your rage, and all of your anger. I know all about it. But I still love you. And I love you so much that I want to fill you with something different. So let's get yourself, let's rid yourself of all these things. And let my spirit do this work. We've got to be receptive. We've got to be open to it. And I think this is a crucial part of prayer, too. Sometimes we miss out on, sometimes we are, it's not that we're too busy doing intercessory prayer, meaning we pray for people's need. Guess what the greatest need that all of us have is? Oh, God, we need more of you. Amen. That's what we need. That's what our people that we pray for, that's what they need. They need more of him. They need more of the love of God filling their hearts. I need it. So if you want to pray for your pastor, say, oh, may God, may you fill Tony to the full measure. God, fill him with your love. And may we as the church, this is Paul's prayer for the church, and I think it's the prayer that Jesus Christ even prayed for us. But we've got to empty ourselves if we're going to be filled with his love. John Wesley says this. John Wesley, he's informed our theology. He says this. When we are living the life of following Jesus Christ, what happens is this. God fills us so much with his love that it just, it just pushes, pushes everything out. He fills us with his love, and it, 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 he says this. It, it excludes all sin. Meaning this. If there is sin in your heart, guess what the Spirit wants to do? Push it out. And how does he do it? He does it by filling you with his love. I don't even have time to think about sin. Because I'm preoccupied with the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And I know that that, sound, that sounds formulaic. This is a journey. <laughs> this is a journey where God is filling us up. And even Paul prays this. This is the journey that he began in us a long time ago and says, I am faithful to bring it to completion. I have started to pour my love into you. And I am filling you. Take heart. You might say, Ooh, I'm so not there yet. Welcome to the club. But what's beautiful is this, this is the work that he promises to do in us. And then we start to live these lives, and, and I, I see it in my grandma, and it's not just because she's 96 that she finally figured it out. Although she's had some experience. Because I see it also in 20-year-olds, and I've seen it in teenagers. I've seen teenagers filled with the fullness of God, and they live lives of love. And I've seen it in 20-year-olds and 30 and 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That God is doing this in us. And when he fills us to the fullness of God, guess what happens? Heaven comes to earth. And people begin to encounter the good news of who Jesus Christ is. That they can begin to experience the abundant eternal life right now. That the promise isn't just for when they die. The promise is eternal, abundant life is for you right now in Christ Jesus. And we as the church continue to live out this mission of Christ in the world. What I love is this. in scripture that says this. The idea in the Old Testament simply says this. The temple functioned like this. The temple of Jerusalem functioned as a place where heaven and earth met. So God resided in the temple. Heaven, he came down from heaven. He's residing here on earth, and people came to the temple to worship the Lord. Because that's where God's presence was. Well, guess what happens when you get to the New Testament? The understanding is still there, and then Paul starts writing letters and says things like this. Guess what, church? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the place where heaven and earth meet. You are the temple. You are the place where heaven and earth meet. 
And that is where people will find life, eternal, abundant life, through the very body of Christ Jesus. He is the head, we are the body, we are the temple of the very presence of God. We are the ones who bring heaven to earth, and we will do that by his spirit, by his grace, by his love that fills us to the full measure of God. Amen. That's it. And so let me just tell you, this sermon is all I want to do is this. I want to remind you of who you are. If you are a follower of Jesus, let me remind you, you and I together, we are the place where heaven and earth meet. That's who you are. Imagine what happens when we go. We, we are moving temples all over the city of Nashville. We're moving temples. You show up to your workplace, and people start to watch you. They're like, oh, it's almost like God is here. It's almost like this is holy. <laughs> yeah. That's because the Spirit of God is at work in you. It's because you have begun to grasp the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And people will be drawn to you as you have Christ us. As we do this, it's not just individual, it is together. But we are, Paul uses both ways. He says, you individually are temples. You are temples of where heaven and earth meet. And you, as the body of Christ together, are the temple of the Lord. We are walking good news papers. Let people read you. Let them read you. And what they're going to discover is ah, heaven. Heaven's right here. Jesus Christ is right here. Abundant life is right here. We've got good news. And let me say this. Because of what the Spirit is doing, you are good news to the world. And we are witnesses of that. So go and be the temple. Usher in heaven. And we continue to say the Lord's Prayer and we'll continue to say it. Because we know it's the process by His grace, by His power, that He is making this a reality. Pastor Trevor is going to come up and we're going to Sing a song in response. And as we pray here in just a moment, I, I, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking, okay, so great. I know who I am now. Thanks for reminding me today, Tony, in case you forgot. So what difference is this going to make tomorrow when you wake up and you go to work? Or you go to district assembly? <laughs> Or you go to school, or you go on vacation, or wherever you go. Let me just tell you, if you can wake up tomorrow morning, my wife says this, she's like, hey, give us another post-it maybe this morning. If you need another post-it note right on your mirror to remind you of who you are when you wake, wake up, just write, yes, I am where heaven and earth meet. By the grace, by the power of God. And when I encounter people and when they encounter me, May they encounter the kingdom of heaven. May they encounter the abundant life of Christ Jesus. Don't, don't underestimate your witness by just being. Don't be afraid to speak to, but just, just be. And when people start to hear the way you talk, they begin to notice you talk differently. You live differently. Your attitude is holy. I want to be around you. Because let me say, when God fills you with the fullness of his love, Jesus Christ, when you see who has been filled with the fullness of God, people were drawn to Christ. Who doesn't want to be around someone who is kind and compassionate? Be the temple where heaven and earth meet. When people encounter you, oh, they encounter the very person of Christ Jesus. So my challenge to you is, yeah, start, start tomorrow morning. Say, well, start this afternoon. Leave here. Know that when you go to the restaurant, eat. You're the temple for heaven and earth. And whoever serves you that day, 
who they're going to come in contact with abundant life. When they come in contact with you. That is the promise. That's what Christ Jesus is doing in us. He has begun this work. He's faithful to bring it to completion. If you're tripping up and you're stumbling and saying, I'm definitely not where heaven and earth be. I feel more like hell on earth sometimes. And if we're honest, sometimes that's how we feel. And don't even get close to me, because I will explode all over you. Let me tell you, even when we feel that way, Christ Jesus comes to us and says, there's no place that my presence will not go. I will go even to hell. And I will work in your life. No matter how deep and dark it gets, the Spirit will pursue you there. And His grace will meet you. And he will say to you once more, Oh, my precious child, I'm not giving up on you. I've begun a good work in you. I'm faithful to bring you to Let's say a word of prayer together as we sing this song in response. May it truly be our heart's prayer. <coughs> Father, we, uh, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you have loved us so much that you sent your one and only Son. Not to condemn this world. You sent your one and only Son to save this world so that we might know the abundant eternal life that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's more than just getting to heaven one day. Know that abundant eternal life is what you brought, it's what you embodied, it's what you lived, and it's what you've called the church now to continue your mission in the world. To be a people where heaven and earth meet. To be witnesses of that good news that the kingdom of heaven is here. That Jesus Christ rules and Jesus Christ reigns. Even when the world can't see it, we're a people that can see the things the world can't see. It's because we have the eyes of faith. And yet, Lord, your hope and your desire is that all would be able to see the good news. That the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is here. And we are the ones who embody that news. We are the good newspapers in the world. And so may we live our lives in such a way that we're not afraid that people read us. We want them to. And we want them to read it being so encouraged that they can't wait to put their faith and trust in the only one worthy of faith and trust. And that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Remind us of who we are. May your spirit continue the work of filling us to the full measure of God. To the full measure of love. And as we live out these lives of love, may the world experience the kingdom of heaven. It's by your grace, by your power, that any of this is possible. It's what you've called us to. We need your help. We need Christ, who is the head, to enable us to be the body that you've called us to. Do a new work in us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Stand with me.